Oh yeah, it is the Plan C Podcast coming at you on a Wednesday. It is currently a Wednesday. Uh, I am Colin here coming at you with a solo pod. Uh, hope everyone is doing all right. Uh, and, you know, all these current circumstances. Uh, I myself am doing pretty well. Uh, my shoulder kind of hurts, actually. But, you know, good beyond that. Um, hope everyone, uh, you know, again, is staying safe. Uh, and if you haven't, check out our Instagram. We got some nice memes there. Check out our Twitter. Uh, at, they are both at Plan C Podcast. Check us out on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Breaker, Google Podcasts, if I didn't already say it. Uh, give us a rate, review, subscribe. Uh, tell us why you like us. Tell us why you hate us. Uh, we recently had one of our first reviews on Apple Podcasts. So I really appreciate that. Thank you to whoever did that. It means a lot. Um, yeah, check out our previous podcast. We have done great hits such as Quentin Quarantine. Quarantino, the Pulp Fiction podcast, uh, where me and my co-host Cameron just kind of broke down what we liked about Pulp Fiction uh, after watching it. That was pretty. That was a really fun podcast. Uh, and just you know, keep your eyes open for stuff coming in the future because I believe we are going to start streaming on our YouTube channel. Uh, maybe starting a week from today, so that's Wednesday. So whenever this podcast comes out, hopefully by Sunday, by that, by the next Wednesday, um, Wednesday or Tuesday, we haven't decided yet, uh, we're gonna start streaming, uh, streaming on YouTube. And that, that'll be pretty fun. We're not sure what games we're gonna do or anything yet, but, you know, just something to look forward to. Uh, anyway, today on the podcast, uh, just... You know, I was I was really trying to think about what is not super oversaturated and what's something that would, you know, be good for you guys. And then I went the complete opposite way and I'm going to talk about the NFL draft and The Last Dance, the new uh, documentary about um, Michael Jordan's last season in 1998 with the Bulls that has been uh, episodically coming out. Uh, I don't know if those semantics are right, but you know who cares? It's it's me by myself. I, I got I got my uh, got my bunny over there. He's hopping around. It's it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah. So we're gonna get into that in a little bit. Uh, beyond that, uh, I don't know. I just wanted to do a bit about uh, you know, technically, I am technically a um, an essential worker. So. This isn't, this is not for me, but you know, if you know anybody who's an essential worker or, you know, or you are an essential worker, just, you know what? Fucking thank you. You are truly, truly doing like, you are, you are a a freaking badass. And I just want to thank you in this time of fucked up shit that you have decided to be so selfless that you are out here just like, you know what? Just busting ass. Um... And, and, you know, I, I more mean medical workers rather than essential workers. And, like, essential workers, I very much appreciate you, too, because without people still going to their jobs, um, you know, then we'd really be in trouble. Uh, so, those essential workers, thank you. Anyway, I'm blabbering. It is time for the podcast. Here we go. And we're back. The NFL Draft. Um, This year, obviously, was much different than any drafts we've had before. And I, you know, given the circumstances, I really feel like the NFL, like, they handled it well. Um, I, I think this could have been a lot messier. I think it could have been a lot choppier. But all in all, they, you know what? They did it well. And you know what? Awesome. Um, I'm, I'm first just going to talk about like the draft itself, uh, and then get into specifics just about like, uh, maybe like a team or two. Uh, but overall, I just, you know, I, I, I felt like the comfort of the, you know, the coaches and the players homes really, really helped the draft. Um, it gave it much more of like a personable feeling in that 
it's like, oh wow, you know, he's this 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 these twenty twenty something year old kids are, you know, it's literally the biggest day of their lives and they're surrounded by nothing but family. You know, they're not in an uncomfortable place like the green room of Radio City Hall, um, Radio City Music Hall, waiting to be selected. You know, they're they're around people and they're in a comfortable place. And you know what? I think going forward, I think it'd be a good idea to kind of stick with this. Um, you know, it's it's pretty it's pretty cool when you see all the prospects and they've got you know they're surrounded by family. Although you know, when I say surrounded, I def I literally mean surrounded. I like. Half of these prospects, like, yes, you should have a badass party at this time and, like, do whatever. But half of these prospects were definitely, and their families were definitely not obeying uh, so, social distancing, unfortunately. I mean, getting drafted to the NFL is probably a good excuse in terms of, you know, breaking social distancing. But, I don't know, it's just it's a little something funny, I noticed. Um... Another another thing that it, especially ESPN that they really have to do is it, it, or to stop doing rather is when you know you're watching and you're watching this kid have the greatest moment of his life and then on national television for everyone to see they're like oh yeah and his you know his mother mm, uh, smoked crack rock for thirty five years and just stopped and it's an incredible story or like. His father and brother both died. Like, ugh. Like, all right. I understand that it's important to highlight where some people have come from. But if it's not specifically the player, it's like, okay, well, now you're just exposing things about uh, a kid who's like, it, it's, it's, it's such a big night. And you're now like taking some, you just, you just, you're throwing something gooey in there. It's like, just tell me about how he can like do a backflip or something. Don't don't tell me about how his mother like battled drug addiction. Like that's really cool and that's awesome for her. But like this, these are not the things you should be mentioning, along with you know a twenty-two year old wide receiver prospect. It, it's just it's just not necessary. You know, if people want to, I well I don't even know, but like. Why the hell do we need to know that information? Why, we, who, who is looking for that information? And again, it's just, it's absolutely mindless. It's, it's literally like they're like, oh, you're projected in the top three. All right, who died? <laughs> you know, I. It's just, it's, it's so dumb. It's so, it's so damn dumb to just, to just dig up the dirt on these people's lives when it's like absolutely unnecessary. Anyway, I feel like I'm being redundant and I keep repeating myself. So I'm going to move on to my next point here on my lovely list of notes. Um, I thought it was really funny that, um, you know, that like Roger Goodell uh, is like, well, I don't know. He was, you know, he was exposed in terms of, you know, his man cave and his, and at one point he was just on a lounge eating M and M's, announcing draft picks. Um, I, you know, I thought, I thought, I thought you can Goodell especially did about a good as job as you can ask, and they were essentially asking him to be a game show host. You know, okay, here we go over here, and then we're back when and no, oh, we're going over here and look at this, look at that, da 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 da. Um. And you know, I just I again he did a great job. Uh I did I did notice that holy shit, they tried so hard to just really personalize the guy. And and you know, I get it. Um he's like he's the commissioner, so a lot he's the commissioner of the NFL, so a lot of people are gonna like look at him like, oh, you know, he's such a stern man, blah blah blah, this and the third. But I don't know, it everyone's a human. Um I just thought it was funny, you know, they're trying to make him like a like a football guy. Ugh. Um, hey, uh, there's not much other to say than like, just, you know, good job, Goodell. Like, good on you. Um, so this was like, I think they said 55 million people watched this, not concurrent. I, I, at least I don't think it was concurrently. Uh, but e either, either way, so it's the highest, highest draft ever, uh, in terms of ratings. And that's kind of like, well, well, yeah, no shit. Uh, this is the first, you know, 
sort of big four uh in terms of american sports you know big four live sporting event in like a month and a half so people were definitely thirsty um and you know what like it wasn't the most surprising draft there weren't so many you know surprising picks but i still think it's it was it was a good thing to have in the moment right because it's sort of that nostalgia thing where well i guess it's not nostalgia because it's sort of happening in the moment but it definitely feels like nostalgia because it's like oh yeah football like i've missed like watching football and seeing my guys and now you know it's all this new football coverage and i think that using nostalgia in a time like this is really important because you know who the hell is going to care what makes you comfortable at that time everyone's just trying to figure that out themselves so you might as well figure out the things that make you comfortable um and i don't know i i just that the thought went through my mind when i was watching football or <laughs> watching fo- when i was watching the draft and it was like oh wow you know this feels really great and this feels like something old again um in terms of what i you know how i was consuming uh and you know just <sighs> Find, 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 find your distraction, you know? Anyway, so I talked a little about, a little bit about the draft, like as a whole, not really getting into any specifics in terms of teams. Um, so I'm going to shift that up a little bit, uh, cause I have some notes here. Uh, I'll, st- I guess I'll start on, um, the, the Bengals, uh, overall great draft for them. You know, I, this is going to sound dumb, but like took the players, that were the smart choices um i don't know about the later rounds i only watched like up to i think i watched up to round five but either way they got like they got good value throughout and for a team that was literally the worst team in football it's a good start for a turnaround um what else uh am i happy with the saints draft to be entirely honest so they didn't have a ton of you know draft capital for this year uh so they can't pick that or they couldn't pick that many players uh that would have brought them lots of high value but going back and looking at it i i'm really happy with you know what they did considering how much they had i think they were able to bolster uh depth where it was potentially needed um and maybe you know you get the replacement a year before you have to so that he's already in the system um because they the uh, for people who are possibly listening to this and you don't watch football which you know what if you are doing that hit me up and we'll figure out something for you because that's really really cool that you are listening to this um basically the new orleans saints uh drafted uh an offensive lineman you know the big ass motherfuckers who are in the front of the offense um before they really needed to uh, and there were other players that they could have used, but I, I don't know, like thinking about it now, it was a smart pick because you're going to have players that get old next year and potential injuries. So, you know, yes, there were other places I maybe would have been happier with the pick, but this is probably one of the smarter sort of outcomes um, that like is going or that came out outcome outcome that came out is that how you use that i don't know somebody get back to me on that that would be nice and you know anyway uh i'm i'm pretty happy with it i don't i don't have too many complaints with it you know i when it comes to sports you know unless somebody's really fucking up i'm not gonna be like go fire the gm um and most of the time i'm just gonna say you know what and so and so we trust in mickey loomis i trust you know that's the gm of the saints so going forward it's just kind of gonna be that same mentality of like all right like let's do it uh like i buy in anyway uh i'm gonna i think oh yeah uh i just want to talk about the patriots real really quick i thought they did not have a good draft uh it was definitely definitely going back to like patriots old drafts where it was like all right we're gonna get kind of like a bunch of really versatile guys and we'll go from there you know and picking the best player available rather than specifically honing in on guys and waiting them to fall to you 
Uh, and, I, and I thought it was really funny that most of that has been overshadowed by um, by the coach of the Patriots, Bill Belichick, his dog. So his um, it was time for the Patriots to draft. So they have a live feed into all these coaches' homes. And in the, sitting in where Bill Belichick was was this little little cute dog. Um, I don't remember specifically the name of it, but it looks like a looks like a little mini husky, but it's not. I, I don't know. It's it's a whatever. But it, it was a really cute dog, and it definitely took some burn off of the Patriots for not you know taking players that people thought they would and making moves that people thought they would. Uh, because apparently they were supposed to take in court, take a quarterback and they didn't. And that was not due to not by design. Anyway, um, I just want uh, just a couple more notes on the um, on the draft, just uh, in terms of team specifics. Um, Browns. OK, draft, you know, again, I'm not touching on every team here. Browns. OK, draft. Um I feel like everyone always shits on the Browns because they are the Browns and that's, you know, that's, 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 that's warranted. Uh, but I don't know in years past, they just like really get shredded. And this year it was like, okay, there's some good stuff. There's some not good stuff. I don't know how I feel about it. So I'm just, you know, articulating that. Uh, one last thing, uh, entertainment piece of the night that, could that had 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 the had everything kind of been normal and like tv shows are still operating and everyone's still you know going to work so the biggest story after the draft um would have definitely been the fact that the packers took a quarterback in the first round um when they already have aaron Rodgers, who yes he has decreased in terms of skill a little bit and he's not at his highest but he's still Aaron fucking Rodgers. Like, that is still a bad, bad, bad man. I don't know if I've everyone's any... Ugh, pardon me. I don't know if I've ever seen anyone throw the football better than Aaron Rodgers. And you know, that's not to say, like, oh, he's better than Tom Brady. I think Aaron Rodgers is more talented than Tom Brady. Do I think he's better? Eh, debatable. But that's not a conversation for now. Um, I just thought it was funny how, like, the most petty and grudge holding player is now put in a position where it's like yep we just drafted your replacement and now we're just gonna stare at each other so i'm super excited to see what happens um in terms of you know the packers versus their quarterback and aaron Rodgers. it's certainly gonna be something to watch for the rest of the season oh and the packers also drafted a backup running back in the second round even though they already have two competent running backs on the roster so that was certainly confusing you know you look at the, the, uh, the way i do this is like all right so the pieces that are coming in how are they going to help you from where you were last year and the Packers were one game away from being in the Super Bowl. And these two additions certainly do not help them get back there. Uh, yeah, you know, a backup quarterback isn't going to get you, unless he's playing, a backup quarterback ain't going to get you anywhere. Sorry, Packers fans. Um, and that backup running back ain't going to help you out either. <laughs> it's unfortunate, but, you know, it's it's really true at this point. Last bit of this well i mean last bit last part i don't know it's whatever you want uh so just um kind of i'm gonna think about a way to segue this in the previous part of the podcast you heard me talk about nostalgia and just how people are really like really sort of sinking into it um just with you know no other content to really consume uh, and so that leads me to the most nostalgic piece of content that is being put out there right now, and that is the Michael Jordan documentary. So quick thing before I talk about this, um, I was born in 1998, so I was only alive for like a couple of years of Michael Jordan playing, but never, never Jordan on the Bulls. Um, I mean, I guess I was alive because I was born in February and the finals are in June. But, you know, I'm not going to remember that shit. Um, 
So, you know, my, my, my memories of Michael Jordan are largely watching old, you know, videos of him and his accomplishments and stuff. So, you know, I am not somebody who, you know, rooted for the Bulls back in the day or is a Bulls fan now or really, I, I don't really even consider myself like a, like a Michael Jordan, like, defender or anything you know a lot of people like to have the conversation of like oh you know lebron's better than michael jordan um or jordan is so much better than lebron and you go in these like nba uh instagram or twitter you know pages and for comments and comments and comments it's all these debates about oh mj versus michael mj versus michael or mj versus michael jeez listen to me mj versus lebron mj versus lebron <laughs> um but, you know, th nobody's Michael Jordan. Nobody's Michael Jordan. Like, watching the doc now, just the pure, just want to win. And literally doing everything in your power, besides cheating, of course. Or that we know of. Um to win and to just like stamp out your opponents and to to rip their souls out like lebron has ripped some people's souls out but he but lebron's also like gotten his ass kicked a fair amount of times with some of the teams he's been on um but anyway you know this isn't again this isn't to talk about um you know michael jordan versus lebron although that that could be that could be a podcast we do in the future uh if this this uh you know virus keeps uh keeps pushing um but you know something to look out for anyway um i just want to start by saying that the the new mj doc is it's it's really well done at least the first four episodes are uh well episode three was a little shaky but beyond that it's fine uh or not fine it's fucking great it's it's really really well directed um i i, I think the pacing could be a little better but you know that's not that's not really a complaint that I, or that's not really something that I have that big a problem with it because the story is going to get told no matter what. I just think that, you know, the pacing might be a little slow because they did want to extend this to 10 episodes. Anyway, um, I just think that it's re it just really feels like a story being told rather than information being thrown at you. Um, and you know, I think Michael is so good in this. Mike is so good in this, uh, and his his presence is just like it's it's not just him there. He's contributing, and he's like he's got a presence. And they you know they now even have like this new meme of him, which I think is fucking great. The one of him like smiling at the um at the at the at the iPad as he's listening to what Isaiah Thomas said about you know the Pistons walking off the court. I. You know he's he's been awesome, and he you know you you, you see his uh, his rocks glass of Hennessy um, goes up and down, you know depending on what part of the episode or interview you're on. Um, you know I personally I would love to see more footage of you know that last year because that that is the premise of this documentary that there was. You know this 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 crew this film crew that followed the bulls for that final year because you know they knew um that it was going to be over you know it was phil jackson's last year a lot of people were up and were uh due for contracts and this that and the third and so this this crew uh, they they get michael's and the bulls and the nba's uh approval and they say, all right, you have all this access, you know, in the locker room, in the clubhouse, in, you know, the physician's, like, table where, you, you know, you're taping people up, mics, cameras, on the plane, what you, you name it, you got access. Um, and so the deal was that they could record all of this, and they had to uh, then run it by Michael as to what, you know, Michael had final say uh, for what got to happen with it. So, for like 20 years, this footage just kind of sat in a vault. It was uh, 18 years more specifically. Uh, this, it, it all sat in a vault. 
And it wasn't until LeBron James won his third ring, and it was I and the story came out where it was it was, it was literally it was talking about it. Uh, where the day of the uh, the Cavaliers championship parade, Michael was like, "All right, let's do this." Um, and I and I had I I've seen that they had wanted to get like Spike Lee. Uh, I know Bill Simmons wanted to do it uh, with when he was at Grantland, uh, thirty for thirty and stuff, but they never got to do it. But now you know, Mike was like, "All right, you know what." We need to we need to show these motherfuckers like who I was. I think so far, the documentary has just showed, like at, at least the first part of Michael, where it's like you can't stop him. Nobody on the court is like Michael. No, literally, not one person on this planet is like Michael on the court. And just kind of the extensions from that. You know, they're so incredible. So, you you know, you go into episode three was was largely about Dennis Rodman and sort of his background, um, you know, growing up, not not going to like a big college. And, you know, when he was like 19, he's like working at an airport or something, just like playing hoops, um, then grows a lot, gets selected in the second round of the draft by the Pistons, you know, uh on these great teams with the Pistons, wins a couple rings, and then goes to the Bulls, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, so I thought it would, you know, I think it's really cool how they portray the other players sort of, you know, in relation to Michael, because really, that's exactly how it was. That's how they lived their lives. Beca- because Michael Jordan was God. MJ was God in the 90s. Like, I I don't know. You know, you hear the stories about he literally couldn't do anything because he was so damn famous that, like, anywhere on the face of the planet, if anyone saw him, they would recognize him. That's crazy just notoriety in general. And I think that, you know, to depict it in this way is exactly how you should do it. Uh, you know, they talk about uh Dennis Rodman he, he he took a vacation in the middle of the 1998 NBA season and it's Michael Jackson Michael Jackson Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson that's that's see, see that's where my brain kind of tripped up there it's uh MJ and Phil Jackson they're sitting there with Dennis and Dennis is like I need a vacation Phil Jackson's like well he needs a vacation and Michael's like no 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 like come on and then they eventually get Mike to relent. And Mike's like, all right, you got 48 hours. Is Dennis back in 48 hours? Hell no. So what does Michael do? Michael goes and gets him. And I, I cannot imagine what it was like. Like Michael Jordan searching all around Las Vegas and for Dennis Rodman. Like that's how important Dennis Rodman was to Michael Jordan. That this man had to hunt him in um in Las Vegas to try and find him so that you know they could win games and he could have his contributions. I think that's absolutely incredible and stories like that are really what are going to make this stock um move. Um I also, you know, shout out to Madonna and Carmen Electra um for making Dennis Rodman who he is because uh, well, I don't know. I think people should just be themselves and personally it gave lots of people a lot of great content but on the other hand you know if the man's happy the man's happy leave him leave him the fuck alone it's 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 a spectacle for some people because it makes them uncomfortable i think but beyond that it's just like why are you so concerned with this man's life i i i watched it i'm gonna do rodman for a little bit for like two more minutes and then then i'm moving on um i watched this clip of him it, it was like him uh in um he was doing an interview with like oprah and Oprah, I swear to God, within 30 seconds, asked him so many different times in like so many different ways. Are you gay? Oh, but are you bisexual? Have you ever kissed a man? Blah, blah, blah. It was like, why is this information pertinent? Like, who wants, like, who needs this, inf- who needs this information now? Like, who, who is, I mean, I know people were dying to know back then, but it's, it's still just kind of annoying. It's like, all right, just let this man live his life. This man just wants to drink, 
fuck a lot and do a lot of cocaine. Just let this man party. You know, I'm I'm not I'm I'm not advocating for the use of cocaine, but I am advocating for the use of people being themselves. Cause like, come on, especially in a time like this, just like just chill out, bro. Um so just uh I I I I had this I had this thought when I was watching the documentary, I was like, oh, if Dennis Rodman had social media, he'd be the fucking best at it. You know, I think in terms of having an image and creating an image, no one like Dennis was kind of one of the, the first people to really be like that outspoken and that famous where it was like, whoa, he's like got he's on his third hair color this week. Like, wow, that's crazy. Um, that's how people used to look at it. And now that shit would be like, oh, Yas Queen, like good shit. Because, you know, people are okay with you being yourself as long as, you know, you're not fucking with other people. Um, and again, like Rodman just, he was a, he was a, you know, you look back at some of his stuff and you're like, damn, this man was a fashion icon. This man was just out here for the society and for the culture. And I, I don't know, I just think it's really cool thinking about that and thinking about, oh, what would have, you know, a 25 year old 20 you know seven year old dennis rodman's instagram look like i you know personally i'm fascinated by it um yeah i also think that like dennis would have maybe been more known now um i mean but then again i don't know because it's that thing where everybody knew the bulls everybody knew scotty pippen Dennis Rodman, Michael Jordan, right? Everybody knew that. So, like, would 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 Rodman stand out this day and age? You know, I in my notes, I I kind of said, um, you know, Rodman would have killed social media, been bigger now than he would have been. But like, is that true? I don't know. It's it's a good point to make because now his platform would it be more accessible? But at this point, I don't want to say that it would have been watered down, but he just wouldn't have stood out as much, you know? Um, who knows, right? Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's, it's, it's a really interesting thing to think about. Anyway, um, just wrapping up here, um, just some prediction. I got four predictions, uh, here for, uh, for the rest of the documentary. Um, episode five comes out this Sunday. Um, so my predictions, I'm just going to say, uh, my, you're going to see Michael Jordan, like being a bad teammate and a bad person. Um, that, that is going to come out, you know, when like Kobe was calling his teammates charm and soft, like shit like that, except it's going to get worse. I think, um, I think we're going to see a lot more like winning montages, you know, where they're like, like, oh, we made this change and then we went 20 and five and then, you know, they play like uh, they play music and they do this, that and the third. Um, I think we're going to I think we may we might get more info on when Jordan retired um, in the middle of his two three peats. We might get more information about that. Maybe we will. I don't know. Um, I think we're also going to see a lot of shit talking and a lot of dicing cards on like the plane. Uh, those are, those, those things, those last two are definitely going to show up. Just saying, just saying. Uh, yeah, so you know what? That was the podcast. Thank you everyone so much for listening. I hope you have very much enjoyed this podcast. When I was figuring out what I wanted to record about today, it was, it was I was kind of having a tough time with it because what the hell am I going to talk about these days? Um, but I don't know. I'm I'm happy I talked about what I talked about because I, I you know I went on longer for definitely more time than I thought. Uh, and you know what? That's just what happens. And I'm happy that I got wrapped up in all my notes and stuff. And woohoo, good stuff. Uh, I I truly truly do hope everyone is staying safe and everyone's family is safe. Uh, you know, just family and health are just priorities at this point so i really hope everyone's doing all right and taking the proper precautions um check you know check us out on instagram check us out on twitter at plans plan underscore c underscore podcast uh check me out on instagram at colin hammingson that's uh just c-o-l-i-n 
H-A-M-I-N-G-S-O-N. I have an open page. It's not like, well, I don't know, you know, check out my page. I'm all right. Uh, also check out my fellow podcasters page uh, at stoic underscore lotus that's my usual co-host cameron he actually just uh took his last college class today over zoom so shout out to cameron congratulations uh also check out uh our sound editor at the jimmy mac he has some pretty cool stuff uh on his uh instagram page some really cool beats and actually the beat that you hear in the intro is uh is his as well so you know thanks Thanks to him for editing this podcast, and thanks for him for, you know, just being a great sound editor. Uh, Again, thanks, guys, for listening. I really hope you are subscribed on Spotify. You have rated us on Apple. You're following us on Apple. You're, you know, checking us out on YouTube channel. There's going to be a stream going up next week. Uh, I think I'm going to be playing... I'm not sure what video game yet. Uh, for maybe three or four hours, one of the one of the middle days next week. I don't know, guys. Just stay tuned. You know, we're just trying to get creative with this and keep making content. Cause I don't know. I, I like. I personally like doing this. Like I know not a ton of people listen, but I, I like having something like this. And you know, if you like it, tell your friends. Let's let this thing spread, right? Uh, yeah. So you know what? That is going to be all for me. Signing off here, I am Colin. This has been the Plan C Podcast. I hope everyone is staying safe, having a great day, night, uh, birthday, orgasm, whatever it is. Hope you're having a good one. This has been me. Have a good one.